Before I begin this video discussing the age of surveillance capitalism, I recommend you check out and sign up to the sponsor for this video, Private Internet Access, a VPN to keep you and your data safe and secure online. Wherever you happen to be browsing the internet from, on any kind of device, mobile or desktop, your data is not secure and your ISP can see every website you visit, unless of course, you've got a virtual private network. Private internet access encrypts and secures your data, makes use of IP cloaking that allows you to be free from geo restrictions. It's easy to use and allows you to block ads, trackers and malware. Check out private internet access in the link below in the description. During the early days of Facebook at Harvard, Mark Zuckerberg had the following conversation with a friend whose name has been removed from this transcript. Zuck. Yeah, so if you ever need info from anyone at Harvard, just ask. I have over 4,000 emails, pictures, addresses, SNS. What? How'd you manage that one? People just submitted it. I don't know why. They trust me. Dumb fucks. So no matter what this guy ever says about prioritizing user privacy and treating your personal information with the utmost sensitivity, care and consideration, this is what he really thinks of you. And given everything that's come out about Facebook over the past few months, it appears his opinion hasn't changed all that much in 14 years. I'm actually really glad I no longer use a smartphone because it's alarming how much personal information that big Silicon Valley tech giants can gather about you. Because services like Facebook are free, the creators had to develop some means of monetizing the platform, and the most obvious way to do that was to essentially conduct surveillance on their users. Their users would provide all kinds of information about themselves, career and education details, likes and interests, status updates, location information, photographs, who they're friends with, relationship status, etc. Facebook became an advertising platform, offering advertisers a means of carefully targeting specific audiences. In order to maintain a steady stream of personal user data that could be monetized, Facebook, like many social platforms, developed a series of addictive reward systems to keep users coming back. The constant dopamine hit created by likes, shares, notifications, and comments meant users found it excruciating to go any length of time without checking their Facebook feeds for engagement and the shallow emotional validation that comes with the site's culture of positive reinforcement. But of course, it's not just Facebook doing this. Google are notorious for it. Recently, Fox News conducted their own investigation, making use of two identical Android smartphones without any SIM cards installed, and one of them was on airplane mode. The reporter undertook a 14-mile journey with numerous stops in the downtown Washington, D.C. area. Upon his return to the office and after re-establishing a connection to the internet on the smartphone that wasn't on airplane mode, it turns out Google software had been collecting his location data the entire time. After decrypting the data sent to Google, 300 kilobytes in all, it was revealed his movements were being tracked. This included metadata related to when they thought he was walking or driving in specific areas. The use of GPS information is obviously taken into account here. The phone that was on airplane mode actually recorded even more information and sent it to Google as soon as the phone was connected to the Wi-Fi network later that day. That includes detailed information like when the user exited the vehicle. Very creepy. The reason for this is because users often don't read the fine print user agreements on various apps, such as in Maps, which periodically stores your location to improve route recommendations. Most people simply tap yes or allow when these prompts come up on their phones and then move on. A lot of apps track your data automatically and can activate location tracking if the user isn't paying careful attention to everything that's going on in their smartphone settings. The more apps you have installed on your device that request your location data, the more complex the issue becomes. Suffice to say, there's a reason why social media services and indeed operating systems like Google's Android are free, because you, the user, are in fact the product in this case. Surveillance capitalism of this kind using data tracking and algorithms are nothing new. In 2012, Target knew a young high school girl was pregnant before her parents did. By tracking her recent purchases, they identified 25 items she'd bought. From there, they were able to apply a pregnancy prediction score to her user ID online. When Target coupons for baby clothes, maternity wear and cribs arrived in the mail addressed to the girl, her father was confused and angry. He believed Target was trying to encourage his daughter to get pregnant. However, after speaking to his daughter, he found out that she was in fact expecting and was due that August. But it turns out it's not just smartphone tracking data and online purchases we have to be concerned with. 
Google's desktop web browser is also being called into question. Google Chrome is apparently scanning users' hard drives without their knowledge. As it turns out, Google's Chrome browser for Windows includes what's called Chrome Cleanup Tool, which is designed to detect and remove unwanted software manipulating Chrome. This was said by the head of Google Chrome security, Justin Hsu, who also said the service is limited by having standard user privileges. It can't be too invasive on the system, and users have to specifically click the Remove button to initiate the cleanup. But even if this service is relatively benign, why wasn't its purpose and the full extent of its operation explained to users? Google didn't provide a heads up on this. Chrome is supposedly just looking through your files to identify malware that might affect Chrome and then sends metadata of the file and the location of where the malware is located on your hard drive, including some system information to Google. This is what had users freaking out recently. And given the current climate we live in, where users are understandably paranoid about their privacy, Google's cavalier attitude doesn't exactly fill one with confidence. The problem really is twofold. The addiction users have with these ubiquitous free services and the apathetic culture of the tech companies in question. Caring about user privacy isn't exactly part of their business model when user data is the very thing they rely on to monetize their products. On the subject of questionable ethics of these big tech companies, I'll conclude this video with the news that Facebook has permanently banned the page of Diamond and Silk, two Trump-supporting black YouTube stars, after they were told, the policy team has come to the conclusion that your content and your brand has been determined unsafe to the community. No information was provided as to why the account was closed, why their reach had been throttled up until that point, what qualified the account as unsafe, or who this nebulous community was. I mean, who are they referring to exactly? Surely not the millions of Diamond and Silk fans who would like their page. The email from Facebook concluded by telling them, this decision is final and it's not appealable in any way. <laughs> that was the exact adolescent wording of the email they received. I'm surprised it didn't conclude with na 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 na. Anyway guys, that about does it for this video. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.